I stayed there for maybe a week once I got there um, and I seen the vibe. I ended up booking that Airbnb for a week. I booked the Airbnb for a week and um, I was just, I was just loving it. I was loving where I was at. I was loving it. And um, I contacted the owner of the Airbnb outside of the Airbnb app. I emailed him and I was asking him like, um, how much would it be if I rented your place for extended stay? Um, I really enjoy the place. Uh, I want to stay here longer. He was like, no problem. Um, it will be $300 to stay until the end of the month. And I first was like, oh my God, that's a great price. A whole month in an Airbnb for $300. That's amazing. After I stayed there for a week, and I realized that the owner never came and did no cleaning. He didn't really, he really didn't clean anything. He didn't bring anything for me to clean anything. Um, it just felt like, I don't know. I just felt like, um, it's been a week and this place is, it's not nasty, but it's just like, I would prefer it to be cleaned up. And then I asked him, I was like, you know, do you provide cleaning supplies or do I have to go buy cleaning supplies to clean up this spot? And he was telling me, you're going to have to go buy it to clean it up. And I was just like, I don't mind doing it, but I don't really want to. I don't really want to pay, buy cleaning supplies to clean up this space. Even though I'm staying here, I just feel like it's an Airbnb, like... I don't know. That's just my perspective. I'm an American. This is what I'm thinking. I'm not understanding the culture. I'm not knowing anything. So I, I messaged him and I was like, you know, or, well, I'm going to find somewhere else to stay. After the first week, I was just like, I'm going to find somewhere else to stay. I'm really not digging the fact that I have to buy cleaning supplies to clean this, this place up. And um, I don't mind cleaning it up, but I just don't want to buy the supplies. I just didn't want to. Once I decided that I was going to be leaving the Airbnb, I had been going around town, you know, meeting people, talking to people, and I met a local. I was asking the local, how could I find an apartment here? And the local was telling me that um, they had a community group on Facebook. He gave me the Facebook name. He was like, just join the group write in the group what type of place you're looking for and someone's going to message you back. So that's what I did. I went into the Facebook community group. I messaged someone in the group. I mean, I messaged on the community uh, page what I was looking for, a one-bedroom um, apartment, uh, not too far out of town, you know, just that type of vibe. And somebody messaged me back immediately. They, they messaged me back. I got exactly what you're looking for. And it was perfect because it was the exact day I, I put this message in the community chat. The day that I was checking out of the Airbnb is the day that um, they scheduled me to tour the new spot. And a lot of y'all might already know what spot I'm talking about. I'm talking about the treehouse. And I'm going to be showing y'all a picture of the treehouse right here before me. This is the treehouse. I got my first apartment in Thailand. And when I say I am obsessed, like, look at it. So a lot of you guys been asking me how it looks on the outside, and this is how it looks. The lady was like, uh, how long would it take you to come to come tour the spot? Well, how long would it take you to get here to tour the spot? I told them, I looked at my GPS, and it said that the walk was going to be 40 minutes. So I texted the lady, um, it's going to be about a 45-minute walk. And she was like, oh, no, no problem. Just uh, send me your location. I'm going to come pick you up. And at first, I was a bit sketchy. I'm not even gonna lie. I was a bit sketchy. I was like, uh, yeah, mm, uh, and then I went to go look at Facebook. You know, I was just checking, you know, doing my research on her real quick to see who she was, and then I seen that she was legit. So I ended up sending her my location. She pulled up, and she came pick me up, and she brought me to the treehouse, which y'all know what I'm talking about. She brought me to the treehouse. I toured the treehouse, and I absolutely fell in love with the treehouse. Like, I love that it was in the middle of nowhere. I love that it was made out of actual trees. I love that it was like, you know, just out the way, just nature, 
Uh, I got this amazing view. Uh, it was just beautiful. It was everything that I could have never imagined. I would have never imagined something so different. So once I agreed that I was going to stay there, she was like, okay, let's sign the lease. I ended up signing the lease right on the spot. She took me to the bank. Uh, I got the money out of my bank card. It's costing me $1,000 to stay there for a whole year. Not just for a month, not for two months, not for six months, a whole year to stay in this place. And I thought the price was lovely. My whole idea was that Thailand is going to be my home base. This is an idea I came up with right in the time period of me getting to Pi and I realized that, oh my God, I love this place. I still want to travel, but... I can have this place to call home while I travel still Southeast Asia. That was my whole idea. So, um, like I said, she brought me to the 18, she brought me to the bank. I ended up pulling a thousand dollars out of my bank. Um, I ended up pulling $1,200 out of the bank, um, a thousand dollars for her. And then I put an extra $200 out for me to get groceries, cleaning supplies and different things like that. And she was telling me, well, you're going to need a moped if you're going to stay over here because it's a little bit out of the city. So she took me to um, one of her local spots. So I rented the moped for $99 for the whole month. And I thought that price was just lovely, you guys. When I say lovely, it was, it was, a, it was a really great price. Really great price. I ended up getting the apartment and I got transportation within the same day for a very good price. So I'm feeling like everything life is going great like i'm telling you life is going great i'm away from everybody i'm away from family i'm away from friends i'm finally i'm finally at a place where i can spend time with myself fully uh i don't have to worry about my clients the only thing that's on my mind is i know i can't be i know i can't get too comfortable because i know that i'm gonna need to figure out a way to make income and in this time, you guys, I was looking for work from home jobs. When I was in Japan, I was looking at work from home jobs. When I got to Thailand, I was looking for work from home jobs. But it was a bit difficult. So within a, a month or two month time period, I might have put in like 100 applications for different online jobs. I had my laptop, I had my headphones, I had all the equipment that I needed. But it just seemed like I could not find a job. So August, September, and October, I spent those three months looking for work from home jobs. And after I wasn't getting no emails back, no response, I just was like, maybe, maybe jobs just not for me. And I already had this feeling in myself because when I was back in America, I've been having my own business since, I've been having my own business for eight years. So I already felt like working from, working for another, working for, Working for an employer was just not my thing. Like, some people can work for a job, some people can't. I'm just one of those people that just cannot work for someone else. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a boss, so I need to always have my own things, my own business, my own motion. So, I just knew I needed some income coming in. So, after I spent October, August, September, October, looking for jobs. I was still making content. I didn't know anything about making content. Um, so like I said, I realized that working for jobs was not for me. So I decided to tap all the way into being a content creator. I started doing my research. I started putting all my focus in on being a content creator. At first I was doing content part-time, but I realized that if I want to make this work, I need to do this full time. So I started putting all my energy and all my focus in, into making content. And when I started doing this, I started spending a lot of money on making content. I started making cooking content. I started making travel content as far as like this me doing this and this me doing that and this me doing this and me this me doing that. Spending money on making content, but I wasn't having any money coming in. I was just trying to do i was just doing anything to see what works because like i said i didn't know anything about making content i didn't know anything about building up an audience so when i started making the food content i started making more travel content of me doing this and me doing that i realized that okay i'm starting to build up a little fan base i'm sort of i started building up followers i started my TikTok started growing 
my TikTok went from a thousand to fifteen thousand within a matter of two or three weeks when I started spending money. I started spending money doing this. I started spending money doing that. I started showing me doing this and started showing me doing this, doing that, and just a bunch of different things. But the whole time, it's just eating away at my money. It's just eating away at my money. But I was also getting donations, but the donations were not enough to... I was getting donations, but it wasn't enough to live off of. It was just, okay, I got enough donations. I can go make groceries. I don't have to pay for this video. It was just enough for me not to have to pay for every single video I made, but I still was end up paying for every video that I was making. And um, so this August, September, October. So in November, at the end of October, um, in the middle of October, I'm skipping. In the middle of October, I am meeting three guys from off of TikTok. Cool DMG, Abundant in Mind, and Prince from downtown. I met these three guys. And they all were black men that were living in Thailand. I I contacted the guy abundant in mind, and they all were black men that were living in Thailand, but they all had hair dreadlocks. So um, I contacted the one guy abundant in mind, and I was letting him know like I'm an experienced loctician. Um, if you ever need someone to get your to do your hair, let me know. I can get you right. He texts me back. He was like, oh, my God, I've been looking for somebody to actually do my hair the proper way. Uh, how much do you charge? I was telling him, you know, I would do it. I would do your hair for free if I can make content doing your hair. But you would have to pay for my travels. So me and him talked for a couple of days. And we ended up getting the bus ride booked, the 10-hour bus ride booked from Chiang Mai to Bangkok, we ended up getting the bus ride booked, and I ended up on my way to Pattaya, Thailand. And this will be my first time going to Pattaya, Thailand, because like I told y'all, when I first got to Thailand, I went straight to Pai. I never did any research on Thailand. I don't know what's, what really goes on in Thailand. I get to Pattaya, Thailand, you guys, and when I say Pattaya, Thailand, that that place, y'all, it was a fucking culture shock. When I tell you it was a culture shock, it was a legit culture shock. The guy abundant in mine. The first place he took me to was Soy Six. You're gonna see buku prostitutes. You're gonna see thousands of prostitutes. You're gonna see drugs. You're gonna see lust, sex. You're gonna see everything demonic. This is the first place he brought me. And I'm just like, bro, what the fuck? And he was like, you ain't no Thailand I had this? I'm like, bro, no. My first perspective of Thailand was hippie, nature, good people, good food. Nobody never tell me that this was the sex capital of the world. Yes, Thailand is the sex capital world for sex and sex trafficking. <sighs> Excuse me. Sex and sex trafficking. So... When he showed me this, I'm like, oh man, this is crazy. But I'm never, I'm not judging the place. I'm just like, man, this is a legit culture shock. So after I stayed, after he showed me this, he showed me a few other spots, and I was just like, you know, let's just go do your hair, bro. It's a lot going on. Let's go do your hair. So I ended up doing him, Prince from downtown, and uh, uh, Cool DMG. I ended up doing those three guys' hair. And um, I ended up contacting, uh, I ended up getting really cool with the guy, Cool DMG. He was really down to earth. And I asked him, I was letting him know that I would be going back to America in November to visit my family for Thanksgiving. And I asked him, can I stay at your, can I stay at your crib? I'll pay you to stay here until it's time for me to catch my flight back to America. So he was like, you know, no problem, it's all good. He ended up letting me sleep on his couch. And if you see this, I really appreciate that. That was amazing. So I ended up staying on his couch for maybe a week and a half until it was time for me to catch my flight back to America. I was only going back to America to make more money. To make more money, you guys. I was going back to America 
to make more money. But my trip to America was a round trip. It was a round trip to come back to Thailand because, like I said, I got an apartment here. All my stuff here. I'm not going to just abandon this to go back home. I didn't want to do that. I was enjoying traveling. I was, enjoy I was really enjoying Thailand. 